when I purchased my first Ubiquiti device, I never thought several years later I will have half of my rack full of Ubiquiti's storage devices. Today, a new member just joined a 8 bay UNES Pro. So in this video, let me compare the 7 bay and the 8 bay. Let me start with unboxing. The box is so huge and heavy. I even cannot cover it completely using my overhead camera. These are the contents inside the big box, the UNES, accessories, and reels, three boxes. The covers of the eight bays are carefully protected by tapes, which is good. However, from the back, you can see this time Ubiquiti goes cheap. It only provides one PSU, so you have to purchase another one if you want the power redundancy. A lot of plastic bags just for accessories. And I don't like the rails which come with the unit. They are cheap. They are not the same as the ones used, let's say, in the enterprise aggregation switch. Yes, you can purchase separate set, but that will cost you about $80 more. I'm really curious about how the old 7-bay UNES Pro and the new 8-bay UNES Pro look differently from inside. So I decide to open them up. Okay, you can see the built-in PSU takes a lot of room in the back. Then it has one less bay. The available room is taken by the right side RJ45 and SFP Plus part and the left side the small LCD screen. Then you can see the main board in the back. Interestingly, the disk controller board is separate with the main board. Pretty clean design. Then let's look into the new 8-bay UNES Pro. You can see around the 8-bay enclosures, there are additional brackets which make the unit very sturdy and it also explains why it's much heavier than the 7-bay. The network interfaces are moved to the back and about half of the back room is taken by the two PSUs. And you can see under the network interfaces, there are CPU memories. And the main board is much larger than the 7-bay version. A interesting design choice is now the disk controllers are part of the main board. It's not separate anymore. If you ignore the disk cables, you can see the whole design is cleaner than the 7-bay version. Now let's compare the 7-bay and 8-bay UNES Pro side by side. You can see to incorporate the extra depth of the PSU, the 8-bay is much deeper. Because of the modular design of the PSU and the network interfaces, the new 8-bay looks better from inside. A big new feature for this 8-bay UNES Pro is it supports SSD cache. However, here comes the third point that I'm not satisfied with the hardware of this UNES Pro. It doesn't come with the required SSD trays. You have to purchase them separately. They are not expensive, $19 each, but why not simply include them and increase the MSRP a little bit, right? Anyway, I purchased two. And of course, you need to bring your own SSD, which is what I am doing now. This UNES only comes with one PSU. I happen to have another one, so let me plug it in. Then let's compare their CPU and the memory. Let me SSH into the two UNES Pros. For CPU, let me run LS CPU. From these two outputs, we can see almost identical result. So basically, 4-core ARM CPU, Cortex 
A57. And if you compare the Bogo MIPS, which is a quick and dirty way to measure the CPU performance, you can see the UNES Pro 7 seems to be even faster than UNES Pro 8. But if we compare their specifications, we can see for CPU, the UNES Pro 7, the frequency is 1.7 GHz. And the new one, the 8-bay, is 2 GHz. We see different results from specifications and the backend BOGO MIPS. So let me do a quick benchmark testing for CPU. In both SSH sessions, let me run the same command, sysbench test the CPU, I will use the number of processors as the thread number, which means 4 for this two particular system. Let me run them. After 10 seconds, we can see the result. From the right side, the new one is about 20% faster than the old one. That makes sense if you compare the specifications, right? So the new one is faster. Then let's check memory. Let me simply show this mem infer. And in the right side, show the same thing. You can see the new one, the UNES Pro 8, has 16 gigabytes of memory, doubled the 7-bay UNES Pro. It means the UNES Pro 8 has more chance to have bigger cache and running more applications in the future. I'm going to post a separate video about high availability for UNES Pro 8. So in this video, I'm not going to talk about the PSU and the link aggregation for the SFP Plus parts. Now let's talk about performance. I'm going to build RAID 10 in both of the UNES. The reason is RAID 10 is the best performance rate supported by both of them. And you may know for RAID 10, it needs even number of disks. So for this 7-bay UNES, I have to only use 6 of them and leave the remaining one as hot spare. Of course, naturally, it will not perform as well as the 8-bay NAS, right? And additionally, for the new 8 drive, you can plug in to SSD to use them as cache. This will furtherly improve the performance. In this video, I'm going to use the exact same disks, WD Red, because of the existence of the cache for the UNAS 8, I will use two 1 terabytes SSD, and the two SSD will be in RAID 1, and it will be supporting both read and write, which means maximally the cache for read or write will be 1 terabytes. Right? Just to test once the file sizes exceeds one terabyte limit, how the performance will look like. I'm going to use multiple files with total size exceeding one terabyte. So that's why I'm going to use a Mac machine. I will build more than one terabyte of files and by using the big files, I'm going to test the read-write performance of the two NAS devices. And of course, for large files, the measured performance will be better than small files. In one video, I have no way to test all the different combinations, so I will be focusing on large files in this video. Okay, let me prepare the 8 200 gigabytes files first. In the local Mac machine, let me generate eight files. Each one is 200 gigabytes. Start it. Fast forward. Okay, eight big files generated. Each of them is 200 gigabytes. In real world, NAS performance is greatly impacted by network and the local client. Just to exclude those factors, let me first test the local I.O. throughput inside the NAS. And in the unified drive, you can see I already created the storage pool by using RAID 10. So it's the best performance RAID setting. Let me SSH into the UNES Pro, I mean, then go to the home Homes folder for the mounted RAID 10 data volume. Then let me run dd command to generate a 10 gigabyte. 
file. Let's see what's the right I/O throughput for a single file. Okay, it's running. Okay, you can see it's per second 362 megabytes. Not too bad, but not surprising as well. Then let me test the read throughput in the similar way by running dd command. So you can see the read speed is much faster, almost doubled the write speed. Okay, then let me start the write throughput testing from the local Mac machine to the UNAS Pro 7. This is the command I'm going to run. I use ls to list the files to be copied, then use xrx to do 8 parallel file copying. I'm going to use pv to do the copy. pv stands for pipe view. The reason I use pv is to show you the progress. Okay, so let me kick it off. Now you can see 8 separate lines. Each one is for one file. By the way, from the Unify Drive application, you can see the IO throughput chart. Basically, it's useless especially if you want to see the real-time throughput. You can see it's even not refreshed at all. To check the real-time I.O. throughput, let me go to the backend, run I.O. stat command. I will refresh the result every one second. So here you can see each distinct physical drive and the read volumes I.O. throughput. Okay, I will keep it running and fast forward. Okay, it's finished. From the client, we can see each file takes more than an hour and the each file speed is about 45 megabytes per second. Then from the unified drive, finally, we can see the statistics. So the write speed is close to 360 megabytes per second. Then let me continue the read throughput testing for the UNAS Pro 7. In the local Mac machine, in the local drive, let me remove the eight existing files. Then let me run this command to do eight parallel file copying from the NAS drive to the local drive. Let me start it. Just from the very beginning, we can see it's a little bit faster than right. In the right side, in the SSH session, I have the IO stat up and running. Let me fast forward. Let's see how it performs for read. Okay, it's done. And from the unified drive, you can see the read is faster than right. It's about 400 megabytes per second. Then let's proceed to UNAS Pro 8. I lost the screen recording for the local I.O. throughput testing for UNAS Pro 8. But what I can confirm is for both read and write, they are a little bit faster than the UNAS Pro 7, which is expected because first it has two more drives when it comes to read 10, then it has the read and write cache. Right? For the UNAS Pro 8, just to compare the situation with and without cache for both read and write, I'm going to test them twice. Let me start with write with cache. Let me run the exact same command from the Mac machine. Run 8 parallel processes and I will copy the files from the Mac machine to the UNAS Pro 8. Let me check the statistics about the cache. The display doesn't make any sense. Either Ubiquiti doesn't have proper cache implementation or the display is messed up. Otherwise, it doesn't explain why for pure write operation, the cache is only about several gigabytes. If we check the speed, it's much faster than UNAS Pro 7 which only had 330 megabytes per second. Then let me test read with cache. So I'm going to run the exact same command, read from NAS to the local Mac machine. Let me run it. 
Okay, it's done. Then from the chart, you can see for read, it's even slower than write. You know what? It makes sense. It's because of the cache. The way we do the test is we read or write eight huge files. For read, the hit rate will be almost zero. But for write, at least the system will first write the data to the cache. From the client perspective, the write will be faster. Because we are not doing small file repeated read or write testing, so you may think the cache doesn't take any effect here, right? So we can validate it. Let me remove the cache from the UNES Pro 8. Then let's repeat the testing. Let me quickly test the write in the same way. From the chart, you can see the second purple one, which is for the right test we just did, is much slower than the first one, which had cache. And even without cache, it is still about 30% faster than the UNES 7. Of course, thanks to two more drives in read 10, nothing else. Then let me quickly redo the read testing without cache. You can see for UNES Pro 8, the read and the write without cache are almost the same, both faster than UNES Pro 7. Okay, this is the end of the video. The only thing I still need time to prove is whether I have wasted money on the two SSD cache. With more daily regular usage, I will tell very soon. Thanks for watching.